Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Velas here in Telford for a massive night of championship boxing this Saturday. Andrew Kane joins me. How are you, mate? I'm all good, mate. Yourself? Very well, very well. Um, we've got a little bit to talk about. I was coming here a couple of weeks ago expecting to see you and Liam Davis and everyone in the boxing industry was going, yeah, that's a shit hot fight. Probably a show stealer, actually. Um, it's not going to happen. So kind of just first off, your take on what's probably been a bit of a whirlwind couple of weeks for yourself. Yeah, it does like it. It's not, you know, what's nothing, nothing to be unexpected in boxing. No, you know, it happens all the time. These type of things, you know, you've got to be ready for anything, aren't you? Haven't you? You know what I mean? And I am. So, didn't really do me head in that much. I um, for about an hour. But then, you know what? I started thinking on the positives. I started even thinking that uh, Cunningham's opponent could pull out, or anything can happen. You know what I mean? And I might be able to jump in with him. So, I was always positive anyway. And then they come through with this other fella. They were. I can't even think what his name is now, but uh, still for the title and that, so I'm still happy, just as happy as if I was fighting Davies. Yeah. Is it one of them where, all right, you're still as happy as if you were fighting Liam, but you kind of want to just inflict pain now because you just want to get out there, a little bit of messing about and build up. You don't want that, you're a boxer, you just want to get in the ring, you just want to punch someone's head in. Yeah. Well, I wanted to punch Davies' head in, to be honest with you, mate, but uh, anyone anyone can get it, can't they? You know, I'm just here to perform, I'm here to put a show on for me, people who are coming down and for the... Uh, just to progress my career again, and every fight is progression, you know what I mean? So, Davies fucking doesn't matter who it is, could be Canelo in the other corner, it doesn't matter, does it, mate? You know, they're just an opponent, an opponent that I've got to get through, you know what I mean? So, none of none of that matters, all that matters, I, I turn up on Saturday and be, be the best version of me, and I'd beat anyone, if that's the case. So, you talk about progressing your career, and I can imagine that, especially from a fan's perspective, you beating Liam Davis would have been one that, kind of in the fans' esteem, I know obviously look, the fans aren't the be-all and end-all, but in the fans' esteem, would have progressed your career further? So is there not that little bit of just, that's the face that I wanted to punch? That is the face that I wanted to punch, but no, my whole life and my career doesn't revolve around one fighter, you know what I mean? So I'm progressing, I'm moving forward regardless to who's in the other corner, you know what I mean? So that doesn't make no difference to me, mate. I'm here to, to inflict pain on whoever it is. What sort of stuff do you want to show? The fans and perhaps you mentioned if Liam's opponent, opponent was to pull out, what sort of things do you want to show rival fighters in this division that you're made of on Saturday? To be honest with you, mate, I, I don't want to show no one nothing. I don't need to show anyone nothing. I don't need to sell myself or prove anything to anybody. I know I can fight, and I know I can fight with top, high, high level opponents, world level opponents, and I believe I'm world class myself. It's not proven on the stage yet, but I know I am, and I have been since I've been 12, 13, you know what I mean? And people around me know that. So it's just about me just being myself and just going out there, having fun and hitting somebody, coming home with the little belt, whatever it is, and uh, bringing it back to our, to, the little, to me little son. Yeah, because there might be people who especially listen to the press conference when you said you believe you're not just at the top of the domestic tree, you're talking the world tree. There might be people who go, it's a little bit cocky, but that ain't coming from cockiness or arrogance. That's coming from genuine self-belief. Yeah, what's well, coming from experience, you know, I've been sparring the likes of like Peter McGrail and the other lads in, in our gym who, who were on a high level, Nick Ball, Brad Strand, you know, we're up there, maybe we're not proven yet, but we know we are, we know we're world class, we see it, we see, we see, we've been watching boxing and, and been around boxing our whole lives, you know what I mean, so we know where we are and you do get people who are cocky or people who are deluded, but I'm not, mate, I'm, I'm, I've got self-belief most, most definitely, but it doesn't come from cockiness, it comes from it being fact in my in my own mind, I've proven it to myself time and time again. So just tune in on Saturday, watch me fight, and then they can say what say or think whatever they want, can't they? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd love to see you and Peter spar. So you done rounds with Peter because I know Peter really well. I bet that's really fucking fun. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always been good sparring with me and Peter. We know each other really well, though. So it's one of them. It's like we sort of know what we're gonna do before we do it. You know what I mean? Do you have to leave kind of a gap between the spars because otherwise it's just like kind of doing the same thing on repeat. Well, at the moment, now, now we're grown men, we don't really spar that much because all of us in the gym, because we're, we're all killers, mate, you know what I mean? We're all, we're all flying and the sparring, yeah, me trainer, Paul Stevenson, he, he, he's biting his fingernails off, watching it type of thing, you know, watching through his fingers like that. He doesn't, he doesn't like to see it because we're dangerous fighters, you know what I mean? So we tend to go out sparring and that nowadays rather than sparring each other. 
and I know you'll have sort of tunnel vision for Saturday night, but um, if you were to put in the performance and stop your man and look good, you're going to have dreams beyond. What does 2022 consist of for you? Because the fact you're already speaking about world level, I know you ain't going to want to be messing about. If you were to get an opportunity at that belt, the European that was on that stage, or maybe even something bigger by the end of the year, um, yeah, this year could be massive. Listen, mate, I, I was ready to fight him on Saturday. I'd fight him, I'd fight him now. If he wanted to go into the into the venue now and, and fight me, I'd fight him right now, you know what I mean? So, yeah, most definitely. But what what, what 2022 brings is, is down to Frank Warren and, you know, and Queen's Beef Promotions. That's not really down to me. They know I'm ready to fight anybody because I've told them and I'm telling you now, I tell anybody who wants to know, I'm ready to fight at any time. You know, give me whatever notice you want. And uh, I'll be there, mate. I'm coming for whatever belts get put there or whatever fights get put there. I'm coming through it. Yeah. And it sounds like you're a man who wants to go in there and inflict pain. Are we going to get a stoppage on Saturday? Uh, I'd say a stoppage, yeah. I'm not going to go mad looking for it, you know. Normally tough, these uh, Argentinian fellas, but I believe that if any man, if I catch any, any man clean on the chin, I can put them over, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, Andrew, thanks for giving me some of your time. Look forward to seeing you in action on, um, on Saturday night. And... Uh, Good luck and good best. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Get knocked, Sparta. <laughs> no hard needed. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.